OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So welcome, thank you for coming and um, welcome to those of you joining on Zoom. And my name is Christy Reyes. I'm an ESL instructor at Maricosta College and an OTAN subject matter um, expert, <laughs> in quotation marks. <laughs> and um, I just want to ask those of you in Zoom, if you can type um, in the chat and here in the classroom, um, how many of you are still teaching synchronously online, maybe through Zoom or Google Teams or something like that? Okay. Still teaching with Zoom. Mm -hmm. Synchronous meeting and online at the same time? Um, like right, we're, we're doing in Zoom, yeah. And so the rest of you are maybe back in person or fully asynchronous online, I would assume. And so I'll just look at the chat here. Zoom, two days hybrid to, to hi, Margo. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm teaching as well. Um, so, you know, we have found that Having the synchronous online with a combination a lot of times with some asynchronous work because students can, they're adults, if we set them up for that kind of independent work, they can do that. So what I'm going to be covering are some simple tools for synchronous online class management and student engagement, but of course I would use these in person as well. So they can be used in both ways, but um, I have found over the past, past few years teaching in Zoom that these are ways to check in with students, to see how things are going, and not them let them just zone out when they're when they're looking at the web conferencing. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get started. So um, my goal is for you to walk away with one new tool that you can use on Monday. For sure, we have a lot of experienced folks here that um, you're obviously come to a tech conference because you are already using technology. So you'll probably hear some things that you already know about. But again, if you can walk away with one new thing to try next week, I think that um, you know I'll be on my way to the World Cup. <laughs> so um, here you see a short URL for a handout. I'm not going to share the slides necessarily because um, it's easier just to have everything on a handout that you can click instead of, you know, progress through slides. So it's bit.ly um, forward slash OTAN simple tools, or you can open up your um, mobile device like your phone, open the camera, and you can um, point it at the QR code and it will open in your um, browser to the handout. You could always email me if, if you missed this part. So I'm going to start off with some classroom management tools. Um, these are the tools I'm going to go over. They are so simple. And everything that I show is free because I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saving my money to pay off a mortgage, to put two kids through college. You know, So I never use anything that I have to pay for. But some of these, some of these do have that you know, paid option that opens up more possibilities to you. My favorite to use in web conferencing is classroom screen. I don't know about you, I'm a bit of an introvert. So um, whether I'm in person or teaching on Zoom, if, if I'm kind of sitting there waiting for students to come in, I'm kind of shy to kind of like have that one-to-one. -one. <laughs> I like them to be doing something. So um, classroom screen is a way to have many different things showing at once called widgets. So I'll show you an example and show you how to set that up. Um, you know, we do a lot maybe where we're giving students time to think and then go into a breakout room and then share. So um, I, I'm getting better at gauging the time, but I like to use a stopwatch to kind of like let students have a visual of how much time is left for a given activity. Um, random name picker, wheel of names, super teacher tools, audio effects are some, some different things I'm gonna talk about as far as um, classroom management tools. This is, oh, really old photo. Um, since this photo, our school has been renovated, but you can see the whiteboard. I always use the projector like the full three hours I'm projecting something and I can really only project one thing at a time and I had very limited space to write anything like my agenda or objectives and um, I really wanted when students come in or when they take a break 
to be able to see a lot of different content at, at once. And there was just not enough space to do that on the small little parts of whiteboard that I had. So, um, of course, we, we like students to have some sort of routine, especially at the beginning of the class, like the, see the agenda, the objectives, um, a sign in, something that they should do now. And I like to have like, I'm very strict about the length of my break times. <laughs> so um, I like them to be able to maybe take a break and as they're walking past, they can see, oh, I have like two more minutes left before I need to get back to class. And so what I love is this classroom screen completely free. You don't even need to make an account. And um, it combines many different widgets into one, okay? So for example, this could be for a beginning level ESL class. As students are coming in, they can see um, what they need to do if it's a Zoom meeting, um, that I want them to go ahead and say hello in the chat, at least, you know, as they come in, have the agenda. They, I see oftentimes in beginning ESL, a routine that teachers say what the date is and, you know, what time is it today? Um, I can have an image, I can have a video playing that says do now, watch this video and start to notice to prepare. Um, I don't know how many of you teach in the evenings, <laughs> students in the evenings are notoriously not by choice, late. And it's so hard to get started with a new lesson when you've only got a few people in the classroom at the time the classes start to, you know, start to be, begin. So you can have some, have them do something now and post it there with other things that you might've written on the board, it can be instead in one place. So um, it is so very easy to create a classroom screen. All you do is go to the site, I'm just gonna refresh here, and it will give you a random background photo, but you see the widgets sort of at the bottom. And so I'm gonna go to the backgrounds. You could even um, upload a background of, you know, a picture of your students, a picture of your school, whatever you like. Um, it could be um, a picture of some vocabulary you're teaching uh, for that day. But um, you can see there are some really beautiful photos. I usually like to have something in the morning like this one. <laughs> um, but again, you can upload any photo. And so then you just go through these widgets. I don't use all of them, but it even has a random name generator. I'm gonna go ahead and upload an image real quick just to show you how that works. So I have an image saved here. Let's say my topic today is small talk. So students can be seeing a little bit about this as they come in. We know some students don't like to take a break. They stay there in the classroom or, you know, if you're in Zoom, you can have this just available as students are going to get breakfast or, you know, a snack and they walk back and they can see a visual of what you're going to be covering that day. To add in some text, you know, you could type in your agenda, your objectives. Today we will cover small talk. I won't write out the full agenda for the day just to save time. You have a lot of options for the, the style of the font and the size of the font and so on, okay? Um, I like to use the timer. <laughs> and you can see with each of these, there are different options for what the timer is going to sound like. So when students are studying from home and they walk downstairs to the kitchen, they will hear this cowbell, for example, knowing that it's time to come back to their screens. Um, there are options for um, colors and so on. So let me just choose one that kind of matches with my theme. There we go. So I set it for 15 minutes and then they I can resize it. I can drag it anywhere on the screen, okay? Um, then you can see there's there's some tools that I haven't even explored, but there's like a traffic light and you can set that. So, okay, start talking now. Okay, you have about just a little bit more time and stop, for example. Um, there are more widgets. So for example, to put in a video is super easy. Let's say I have this video. Um, about, it tells the idiom of small talk, kind of defines it. All I need to do is copy and paste the URL. Oops, hopefully I got that URL. And I go here to video and I paste it in. 
and I can have a video playing as students are coming in. Maybe it was a video. Maybe it was a video that they were supposed to watch for homework, but some people need to see it again, or some people were absent yesterday, so they can catch up, you know, as if they come early or during the break. Um, I can put in, again, um, many different items. Let me see. So my widget tool, just click the arrow and it reappears, and you can hide it like that. And so it's it's a really great tool for just having a lot of things, including multimedia in one place instead of scattered throughout uh, the front of the classroom, for example. Um, so that's classroom screen, very easy to use, completely free. And I love it, I really love it. Keeps, it keeps students focused. And then when they come back from the break, they see again what we're gonna be focusing on. So that's classroom screen. Christine? Yeah. Um, can you share that with students after class? Or um, I I made the free account, and I I just saw today that I got an email from them that there are lots of more new features. So I haven't really explored whether it will save that and email it. But that's a great question. Thank you. I can find out about that. Right? Yeah. Let me see. I'm not logged in, but probably to do a lot more, you would pay. But um, you you definitely check it out because um, let's see if it says anything here. Um, I'm not really sure about emailing it, but you can save. You can save your screens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. This This is a very easy, simple, free tool. Like a lot of free tools, it has ads all around it. But um, there's one that I would never use, and it's like this bomb that explodes. <laughs> but um, but you can see there are um, stopwatches. There, see all the lovely ads, classroom timers. There's a whole bunch of other stuff there. But um, you know, it's sometimes good to have a visual. I always do this kind of like, okay, one more minute. If I can just have it there for them to see, it kind of, you know, is less distractive. Uh, so one time a, in a training, a teacher told me that they really didn't like when I give that countdown. So, okay, here you go. Here's a visual countdown. So you can just like, for example, let's do the candles, my kind of favorite. And I just go there and you set, you set the time. So if you want it like 15 seconds, it can go really short time, however long you want it to be. I know that in Zoom, there are some widgets or some tools that have timers. I haven't really explored those. Have any of you explored some of the tools that I guess are available within Zoom, like a timer? Have you? And do, how do they work, Monica? It didn't work very well. Okay. Okay. So this is a look. You can go there and in an instant, you can create a timer. So it's very very simple to use. Um, <laughs> okay, so Monica, don't say anything because I saw your presentation yesterday. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you're in a classroom like this, you can see who's alert and not paying attention and maybe strategically call How do you do that? How do you call on students to try to get the widest involvement? Well, I used to use these because a, a, a colleague told me, write um, every student's name on a popsicle stick. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it, 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 it backfired on me, to be honest. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I really dislike cold calling personally. Um, from my experience as a student, <laughs> but so I don't like to cold call. Instead, I do more like think, pair, share, and now someone from that pair, you're going to answer because then they've at least rehearsed their answer. And there's, you know, that face saving kind of willing, more willingness to risk because, hey, that was my partner's answer too, right? Well, there are a number of different ways we can call on students that, um, again, giving them a chance to prepare their answer, but with some digital tools. And so um, 
One is this one, random list. This has this site has a whole bunch of random stuff. So uh, again, it's free. So you get these kind of annoying ads, but all you need to do is um, type in or copy and paste in um, some students' names. And then we go ahead and we, okay, Lauren, Lauren, tell us your answer for number one. Okay, and then we go to the next one. Okay, Michelle, you're next, right? So it's making sure that everyone is participating a bit more. Um, the one I really love though, um, and Monica presented about this, is Wheel of Names. There are a couple others that are very similar. Um, but again, this one has a lot of customization. Um, so I can go here to customize. I can um, change the sound, random music, what happens after the spin, oh, like an applause or um, a twinkling star. Um, I like the donut one. I don't see it right now, but you can even, you know, put almost any sort of image and color. Let's make it the cookie. Why not? Okay. Um, so it's got all these customization options that are free. And so it's, it's already got some names in there. I would just copy and paste in the names. And then I'd be, okay, come, we come back from the breakout rooms. Each group is going to share out, but one person from each group is going to be speaking. So I spin the wheel and you can set it up so that that student's name is re removed after they have given an answer. Daya, give us the answer. And then I can remove that student's name so they're not called on repeatedly. So it's simple, simple to set up. You could be setting it up while students are in breakout rooms, for example. Okay. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back here. Going backwards. Um, have you ever heard of super teacher tools? Yeah, tons of stuff. Actually, I'm not even, I'm gonna just skip over it since some of you have heard of it, but check it out. It's got everything for adults. I think all students, all people are creatures of habit. I'm sure you get this if you're teaching in person. A student comes and sits in that desk right there, and that is their desk for the whole. And then the next day, or someone new comes and says, oh my, what are you doing in my desk, right? Well, sometimes we want to mix it up. So there is a seating chart maker to kind of mix things up, a group maker. There's another random name generator to pick different students, a countdown, a spinner for games whenever you're playing games. Um, there are game templates like Jeopardy, who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, there's one called Rocket Review and Speed Match. They're so simple and fast to set up. And so those are some ways you can not only manage the classroom, but also engage students. Do you ever have students make oral presentations mm -hmm. and in Zoom? And, you know, usually it's just kind of, strange. When we're in the classroom and students give presentations, they're all like cheering for each other. And I don't know what's going on in Zoom, but it, it's like dead silence a lot of times after a presentation. So what I usually do is, of course, I'm like, yeah, and like, hey, everybody. But, you know, they, they've muted themselves to be polite or whatever. So I usually have one of these two open. This one is from some company and this one is from a teacher. I usually have this open and I need to make sure that my, oh, why is it something happened? I probably copied and pasted it in wrong, um, but so we'll go to this one. And I usually have this open and ready for after their presentation and okay, oh. And, and then they love it, they laugh, they think it's so funny. Um, on the handout, this one is correct. There's one here that's really funny because it's a lot of pop, pop culture type of things. And there's like Larry David, uh, you know, he says something funny. There's maybe Nicki Minaj says something funny, but there's one <laughs> that's really funny. After my students kind of got used to this soundboard here, there's one, like I'll ask a question to the whole group and st students said, play the crickets. Because no one's, there's a crickets one. So check that one out. Okay. 
Um, so I, I, I pasted the um, URL wrong, obviously. Um, do you have, do, do your students have like a textbook or handouts, paper, physical handouts? I know those three do, but <laughs> anybody else? Okay, yes. So, you know, when you're teaching in Zoom and maybe in person, sometimes I just don't want to wa waste time going over a handout in Zoom, taking up that time. What I like to do, and it's so very easy to do, is you can create a free account at Live Worksheets. There is a more robust version called Wiser Me, but that's a more, yeah, that takes a little more time to learn. This one is so, so simple. You can upload a handout that is not copyright protected, okay? Uh, so something you've created, and um, you can make it interactive. So let's say it's matching. You can click, and you can put in the answer, and it will make it a live worksheet. So instead of uh, the whole class in Zoom, let's go over the homework, get out your worksheet, uh, same, same, you know, same person, half this class didn't do the homework or something. Instead, I, I digitize the paper, you know, worksheet, send them to breakout rooms, create a link of the interactive version, and someone in their breakout room shares their screen and they're teaching each other. Then when we all come back together, say, which one did you all get wrong? Oh, you, you all corrected each other. It, it, we know that when someone can explain some, something to someone else, they understand it better. And sometimes students peer teaching, they explain it better than I can in, in student friendly language. So um, what I have here is one version of that. You don't have to even upload and create your own interactive worksheet. You can create an account and do a search. There is, if you teach ESL, for example, there is a ton of content there. So sometimes I'm teaching a grammar point and like, oh man, they need a little more practice than I've given them. What can I do? I go here, I search something up and I find I highly recommend go through the worksheet and make sure you agree with answers though because there are a lot of uh, teachers maybe in other countries who've created content and that's maybe not how you would teach it it's maybe it's not quite right for you but go through it so i've just brought up this one mm -hmm. i'm sorry we had a question in the chat do you know if live worksheets is compatible with screen readers i don't think so that's the one negative yes um so you know, this one is really great for a beginning. So students would go to a breakout room or if you're in person and you have Chromebooks, you could have students paired up and working together. If your students are new computer users, here's some good um, mouse work, hand-eye coordination. It's a simple drag and drop. That's all they have to do. Someone else created this. I didn't create it. So all students need to, I'll just do um, one just to demonstrate. They just drag it like that. And then they can go down, they click on finish and um, they can get immediate results to see what they got right or wrong. They could, if it's your own, they could email. If it's something you've created, you can email it. So there are tutorials on the site that um, show you, see, I only got one out of 10, okay? So I need to practice again. But um, there are tutorials right on the site, you can see that if you're using an LMS, you can embed it. Um, if you're using Google Classroom, you can put it there and so on. So very, very easy to use. And so you just go here, make an account, and you can see the tutorials right here too. So that's live worksheets. And so next, um, it'd be great if we can just get away from paper, but Honestly, we've got some students who really need to be able to write things. It, research does show when they've written something, it will stick in their memory a little bit better as well. Um, so here is like just another example. So live worksheets, they're totally interactive. You get immediate live feedback. Um, so then I tell students, you know, do it again if you didn't get 100%. They're working together in their breakout rooms. Um, there are just... You can even embed video, so it could be listening. There are lots of different question types, okay? So moving on. So those are some kind of like, 
you know, classroom management, but also a little bit of engagement. But now let's look at some engagement tools. We know that the younger generation, but even some folks in the older generations are really into gamification. And that's a great way to liven up our classrooms. And so I have here three tools that are completely free. Of course, you can create accounts and create your own stuff, but sometimes we're so busy, especially if we work at multiple schools, we just noticed yesterday, oh, they didn't really get this and I wanna you know, liven it up. Again, with all three of these tools, you can just go there and find something that someone else has created, check it, make sure it works, make sure the answers are correct and just use it. Okay, so there are two options, create your own with an account or just search for content already made. So one um, is Jeopardy Labs. And let me see if I have one here. Okay, so I just did a search. This is not even my account. I just did it. I just went on there and I did a search and I, I found this one. And what I love, do you ever do De Jeopardy games? Yeah, I usually have to have some student help me with the scorekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> to try to do math in my head in front of students is humiliating. <laughs> so let's just say like, well, okay, we have two teams, okay? And here's, here's the great thing too. You come to school one day, you're in person and the internet is down. <laughs> well, um, maybe in that case, it would be a little bit hard, but you know, back at home, you can't even print this, you know? So you could go old school <laughs> if you wanted to. So um, we're gonna go ahead and click start. And um, so let's say we have two teams. We'll go uh, turn it press on over, okay? And we'll go right here and turn it on over, okay? So, um, what's your name? Okay, could you please choose any number here that you like? 500, this one right here? Cal the, thank you, California this for 500. Okay, so anyone from this team, now in Zoom, what I like to do is, um, I, I, do, I do the groups, <laughs> but you can use one of those other, you know, teaming, like the super teacher tools team generator. And then I, I give students directions, like I don't want you to answer the question. So I teach them to do a private chat with each other. And I say, okay, she's going to ask, she's going to answer the first question, but I help her teammates send a private chat to her make sure that you agree with their answers and you answer this time for your team next time around the second person in your team is going to answer but you're all working together as a team so um so this team will just let anyone from your team answer what ocean touches california's coast it's a tricky one <laughs> pacific, pacific okay and so we go there and we, you can see to continue escape, reveal correct response space bar. You got it right. And we can see how it just, it's going to do the math for me, <laughs> which is kind of nice. So we'll give the other team a chance here. So to continue, we go escape. So um, Katrina, more California for how much? I have no idea why this person put 301. Must be special reason there. How much did you say? You want to beat them. What is the official state animal of California? It's found on the state flag. Okay. Okay. Work together, team. Make sure you agree. The grizzly bear it is, yay. So I can give team two. And so it goes on like that. Students get really into it, it's fun. You know, as long as you set it up well and making sure that someone from the team, it you know, flipping the turns that someone else is responding each time, otherwise they can get disengaged. But if you set it up well in the beginning, um, it can work, yes. So far. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So let me just go to the site. So free account you can create. You don't even need to create an account, I don't even think. You can just create, but you go here, find. So what's something you're teaching these days? Grammar or topic or anything. Okay, all verb tenses or one specific one? Verb tenses. 
So what you do is you can just like do a little rollover and you get a preview of the questions. I would actually go into it and kind of play it, you know, real quick, just to ensure. Um, and I like to sometimes star it. So I remember which one that I liked and, and then just go through and see all of them. So there are, look at lots and lots and lots and lots of, oh my gosh, more than five pages of, of just verb tenses. So completely free, really easy just to find something on the fly, you know, you know, find out today that you want something a little more engaging for tomorrow. That's what you got. Um, so that's Jeopardy Labs. Um, you can search for games. Say that again, Chris. Make sure you win. No. <laughs> um, so I like it because, you know, some days I have more students attending. You can set the number of teams. You can have the scoring right there on the screen. I don't have to write it on the board. Um, and again, I, like the printing option. I haven't done that, but that's an option. How many of you know WordWall? Yeah, I love this one. Um, Someone told me about it and like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll check it out. And then um, I was teaching modals, which are really hard. And so back in the classroom, I had this really, I think, great activity for modals where students were working in groups and they had a sentence with a modal like, oh, it's cloudy today. It, um, there must be rain coming, must, okay? And they had to match up the meaning of that modal. This means logical conclusion. And, but it was sentence strips. How do you do sentence strips in Zoom? I don't know. I was like trying to figure, I tried so many, I was trying Jam, or I was trying all these different tools. This one, as you can see, depending on the, the data, whatever you enter, you can get up to one, two, three, four, five times three, 15 different types of games. Okay, so um, they, they call them interactives. With the free account, I believe you get up to five interactives. I have multiple accounts. <laughs> I just like just play it that way. It works so well on phones. It looks just really great on phones. Students don't need anything. All they need is the link. And so, again, I often, I teach something like I want them to do something a little more fun and interactive in Zoom. So let me go there. This one I found, um, I really love this one. I was reading an article in, I think it was Edutopia by this gentleman, Jorge. And he, um, he was writing about how to engage students and he created this one. It's just some question prompts. It's a spin, you spin it. So this could be like a great icebreaker or something, right? And it says, oh, share your favorite childhood memory. And so then students, I share the link in the chat. I set up my breakout rooms. I make sure there's someone in each breakout room who knows how to share their screen. They go to the breakout rooms, that student shares their screen and that student is kind of doing the tech part of it in the breakout rooms. And so um, that could be um, something fun to try. This is my account. So let me just show you really quickly my, here's my modals practice. So the first time I did this one with students, I sent them to the breakout rooms and I told them, do this once, because it's kind of hard. And then I said, after you do this one and you get your immediate answers, then um, go and do one other one so they can see all of the different games. You can see with the data that I entered, not all 15 or whatever possibilities are there, but what the one that they really liked, and it takes me back, there's one that's kind of like Pac-Man. <laughs> Not to age myself, but, um, you know, they, they chose this one. I, I, then I was going around to the breakout rooms, like, you know, two more minutes and they're like, oh no, no, we, we're going to do one more. I couldn't get them to come back from the breakout rooms because they were really engaged and teaching each other and having a lot of fun. So you can see many different games with just one type of entry. So again, you can go there. I'll just show you really quick what this would look like. Oh, you should practice your English more outside of class. What would that be? You should. Maybe you should take my class. No, I'm just kidding. Advice. Yeah. So then you can see they get immediate feedback. And 
I was just reading some information about feedback and the more immediate feedback is the the better it is for students because if they have to wait for you to correct their homework next Monday they've lost some of that information that you've taught them okay so that's word wall you can go there with an account you see there's some options and students can you know put themselves on a leaderboard but if you go way down here it's a little bit hidden to community you can search for any type of activity or content, tons of ESL stuff, but even math stuff is there as well. Okay, so that's word wall. I'm gonna close that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Can play and team, um, Individually, yeah, definitely. So you just share the link and- mm -hmm. oh, Sorry, um, can you repeat questions because the audience- Yes. Wait. So the question was, thank you for letting us know in Zoom that you can't hear the questions. The question was, so they can play as a team together or individually, of course. All you need to do is find the, the activity that you like. Um, there's a share button in the bottom right that actually does give you an embed code if you wanted to put that activity in your learning management system. But you can also just share out the link and ask them to do that for homework for fun. You know, probably with adults, they're they're playing this game on their phones and probably their kids will come over and say, what are you doing, mom? And, you know, kind of promoting family literacy as well. Do you know Bamboozle? A couple of you should have been in a different workshop. You know everything. <laughs> but um, Bamboozle is completely free. If you do pay, you get some better options, like more different types of um, they call power ups. Um, the power ups are awesome because a, a, a team may be totally winning and then they they get this power up that they have to give away their points to another team. And they're like, ah, oh, no, you're kidding me. But it's it's free otherwise that you can go and search for games. You can create games with the account. Again, you get to put in a lot. You get a lot more options to putting in visuals or uploading your own original photos. And um, a little bit different from Jeopardy in that, um, well, actually it's quite similar, but um, it's just, there are hundreds of games here. And as you can see it, you can import from Quizlet or Kahoot. And there are 500,000 games there right now. So um, you can have games for up to four teams, up to 24 images per game. So let me see here. I think I have one. I created this one just as an example. So again, going with California state facts. So this is similar for you on the user end is that you, you can go through and see the questions to make sure it matches and that the answers are correct. And so we go to play and you see with my free version, I only get this and I can choose the number of teams that maybe I'll just put eight questions instead of 16. Um, I get to see some power ups and oops, dang it. Let me try that one more time. Play. Um, it's this one play for free and power ups. Um, We'll just choose this one. Okay, so let's go to um, Monica, your team one. Which which one do you want? What number? Five. Number five. What is the state bird? Poyo? <laughs> Poyo loco? Whale, gotcha. Oh, you're right. Yay. So you see, I can shoot. Oops, sorry, I accidentally clicked wrong, but it was correct. And then it would it does the scoring here again for me. Sorry, you do have like 10 points or something. Okay, so someone from over here, Chris, do you yeah. want to give a try? Yeah. Chris is very competitive, so be careful. Number two. Oh, oh. You need that game music. The timer music. You need that timer music, yeah. <laughs> Give up? Okay. 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 So uh, we'll have a steal. So you can you can set it up. Like, would you like to steal? Okay. So they steal, and um, you know the 49ers. Okay. 
So you see how it does the 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 score. Um, so I won't have time to show you power up, but oh man, that's that's really fun when you get the power ups because anybody can win. Anybody can win. Anybody can lose. It was because gold was discovered in 1949. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh, I challenged you a little bit there. Question? Yeah. Yeah, of course, just text questions. So once you create your free account, um, you can go to games and you can do a search. There are just oh my, like 500,000 games, as I said, many very appropriate for, you know, they, some of them I may depend, you know, I would want to go through them, make sure it's appropriate content for adults. But let's say you're teaching gerunds and infinitives, one of my favorites, balanced students. I, I didn't spell it right. Infinitives. Okay. So let's see. Let me look at this one. Hmm. So you just check it out. See if you agree and you just use it. It's as simple as that. So yeah, that is bamboozle. That's a good question. You're asking all the hard questions. I think you do need to have the paid account probably. Yeah. So um, on the handout, I have all these instructions I won't go through for creating a game. It's pretty simple. If, if you use like a learning management system, you know how to create a quiz. It's very similar. Um, so let's move on. How much time do I have left? Like five minutes or so or less? Say so push it. Push it. <laughs> push it. Oh, push it. Okay. Okay. So. Um, good okay. Thank you. You're so kind. Okay, so for formative assessment, how do you define formative assessment anyway? Yeah, uh huh. And what what do you usually do for formative assessment? Yeah, and and do you decide? Oh, you can't. You're not ready for the next level based on a formative. Right. So it's it's. Did you did you have something you want to add? Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, I'll be, I'll be able to get through it in 13 minutes. Thank you. Um, so formative assessment is for us to form our teaching and maybe reform. It's also for the students, but as I consider formative assessment more for students retention and recall of information and practice. But really, it's supposed to be for us to see, did they get it? Am I ready to go on to the next step of this, you know, teaching? Or do I need to repeat or reteach in a different way, right? So there are lots of ways we can do this. Could be, it could be a quiz in your LMS that is graded or ungraded um, that you let students take again and again, but it's not really making a decision about are they ready for the next level? That's that's more summative assessment, right? So one tool that I, maybe Monica, have you heard of this one? I have not. Yay, I got Monica. <laughs> Woo clap. You know, some formative assessment tools have only one possibility. Like some people really love Mentimeter, but you know, it does have a lot of possibility, but this thing has so much built in. Actually, let me go back to the slides just to show you what it's got. You can have a multiple choice quiz, a poll, a word cloud, an open question, um, label an image, find an image, and it goes on. And it's free. So for example, I just created a free account. You go here and you create an event. You choose what you want it to be, like even a timer. You know, I don't know if I need that. I've got the other spinner or I've got other timers, but um, you can import questions. You can see examples. So like if I just went to poll, all I need to do is put in a question. It looks like I can put an image and I put in um, the right answer and the distractors. So I'm just going to go back for a minute to my, because what I really love about it they call it events. What I really love about it is it gives a URL and a QR code right away. So um, how is your mood today? So I go ahead and go display. And um, then I go here to the right. And there's, there's actually three different ways students can engage with it. They could scan the QR code. They can go to WooClap and enter that or they can use their phone and text a message too. So it's really versatile um, and you're getting some live feedback. 
um, on, you know, how students are grasping whatever content you're teaching. So that's WooClap. Check it out. I don't have time to go further, but you, you can see many ways for students to join. Um, Tricider is kind of cool because it has this option of, uh, it's really great for brainstorming, for example, but it gives students options of voting up or voting down different things. And so it's completely free. Unfortunately, different from WooClap, what it doesn't do is it won't give you anything but a URL. And so, of course, if you're in Zoom, you can copy and paste that. But if you're in a classroom like this, how am I going to get that to students? I mean, if you're using texting, whoa. If you're using texting, I suppose you could text it to them. But this is how easy it is. You just go there. You type in your question. Um, you know, what is something you didn't understand today? Today, I can never type when people are watching. Okay, so then what I do, all I need to, oh, something happened with uh, the internet. Um, so let's just say I type that, okay, just to save time. So then all I need to do is um, share and invite. And I get some options here, but I'm just going to do this because QR codes seem to be the way to go. So I'm gonna go here. And I don't know if you know this, but Google Chrome has a simple way to create a QR code for you. You go to this little arrow and you go there. Let me do that again. And you can create a QR code just like that. So students could simply um, scan that. And so you're seeing it live as the answers are coming in. And you can, you know, always great when you're doing any sort of check-ins or feedback from students to tell them, hey, yesterday you said you didn't understand this, so I'm going to teach it. Because then they, they, they feel heard and they understand that you are listening to their needs. Um, if you also want to do check-ins and formative assessment and you're not using an LMS, um, Google Forms is great. I like to use Google Forms after week two to get some feedback from the students. How's the class going for you? Am I going too fast, too slow, or just fine? How's the workload? What is something you really like? What's something you, you don't really like? So here I have this Google form and for reflection, I can go send, I can, um, I can embed it, right? In my LMS, or um, that is just way too long for students. I can shorten it, but there are some QR code generators too. So um, just to show you really quickly, how much time do I have? Like one minute? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm doing much better than I thought. Okay. So um, there are several, but this one's kind of cool because you can choose, look at all the different possibilities, QR code generator. So you just paste in a URL, but you get to um, you get some options for how you want the appearance to be. So, oh, I like that one. Scan me, right? And so you just download that, and um, there it is. So students could give you some formative feedback, um, or do a, you could do a formative assessment with a Google form. All right. The I think this is my last one. Let me go backwards. Yeah. Um, I think I learned this one from my colleague, Katrina, quite a few years back. And it's Answer Garden. And um, it is so simple and minimalistic and real time. It's perfect for exit tickets. So different type of formative assessment. You ask a question, you share the URL or QR code or embed, and students reply in text and you get a word cloud. Nothing else for students to do. It's so easy and nothing much for you to do either. It's so easy. So you just go to the site and uh, um, you can see there are some apps available. You go to the plus and um, how would you rate your learning today? Okay. And I might give more options you know, but just to make this quick and, and simple, 
Okay, so you can see there's brainstorming. I would not choose moderator because then I got to make sure, you know, we teach adults, hopefully not going to put anything nasty, but <laughs> um, so I just leave it at classroom. You can set how long. I, I don't think my students are going to type more than 20 words, honestly, right? And I don't need a password. That's okay. Um, so I just go there, da, 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 da. I'll accept any kind of case. Um, so then I just go ahead and click create. That's it. And so then you will see at the bottom the sharing options. Share. Of course, it's got ads. And... <laughs> And you see some sharing options there. Um, if I go to plus, oh my God, look at all those different sharing options. So, so many different social media I've never even heard of. Um, but there's the QR code right there too, okay? So it's got the URL or tap for the QR image. It's got an ad, I need to close. And students can scan and as they're walking up, scan and answer before you leave the class kind of thing. So I can get some feedback from you. Very, very easy to use, completely free. And that was what this presentation was about. Simple and easy tools to use. So that's the student view. So then, as you know, with word clouds, whatever appears largest, that was whatever was entered most frequently. Um, just one thing that I really, I learned recently, I don't know if you've ever heard of English language proficiency standards and, um, and the college and career readiness standards. About a month ago, I did through uh, links, something called standards in action. And I recommend, it's very intensive though. So you would have to do it when you don't have a lot of um, teaching going on. But um, I learned a new way to use a word cloud. I'm not sure that uh, Answer Garden would be the best, but I thought this was the most creative way to use a word cloud. So using something like Tagzito, let's say you have a text not too long, you put the text into the word cloud and then you have students analyze some of the words and predict what the text is going to be about based on the words that pop out as largest. So I thought that was a really interesting way to get students like preview and kind of predict what a text is going to be about. So that's the end. Um, again, here's the QR code to get the handout. Monica, did you get one new thing? Woo clap? Yeah. Okay. Did you did you get some one new thing that you can walk away with? Any questions in the chat? Thank you all.